Hello friend, it's Pat Sloan here with my daily video and I am going to focus first on design walls. We've had a lot of discussion and a lot of questions over many years about you know, what to use for a design wall. And so I thought I'd just give you a little tip. A few people had shared some of their design walls in my community. So I'll link you down below in the description box over there. And while you're there, click the uh, subscribe button so that you can keep up on all the fun things. So I built this design wall, which I'll uh, scroll up. This is actually two units and I'm gonna describe how they were made. And I have had them in different places. My studio has been in different places in my house uh, and I've had them in different spots for about 35 years. So they're the exact same ones and now they're bolted to the wall. But prior to that, they were freestanding. So what they are is insulation boards. So if you look here uh, on this, this unit goes all the way over to the other side it's you know as long as if you stood it up as your regular wall and there's two of them one here and one here and there is a seam right in the middle so i'll scroll you in there and you can see see that seam so there's actually two boards board one and board two uh, the 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 boards are um, I don't know what their formal name is. I just call them insulation boards for the walls of your home. So if you go to a um, you know, home center and just ask for that, so you can push, they're like styrofoamy, so you can push a pin into them. So that's what I can do. I can take pins and push them in here uh, and it's fabulous. But because I wrapped it with flannel, the flannel will hold the quilt blocks without any pins for the most part, unless I have a big block or just sometimes it's funky and it won't stay up. But for the most part, I don't need to pin most of the things up. I can just stick them up on the flannel. So how did I get the flannel on there? You know, this is really, really simple. So don't overthink it. Don't try to make it harder than it is. So pretend, uh, pretend this is wallboard. This is a uh, not wallboard, but pretend it is. It's a poster piece of poster board for the design, the design boards that have you know, fleece on one side. But here is the, uh, you know, so this would be tall. It'd be long like this and it would be wide. I think they're like six feet wide or something. No, they're not six feet wide because I'm not six feet, but uh, what are they, about four feet wide? Maybe those are, but they, these were made long ago, so they could be different widths now. So you would take the wall board and you would take a spray glue, you know, you would spray glue it probably in sections since they're so long, you know, you, you want to make it smooth and flat. Then you would just take some nice quality flannel. Don't go buy in the really cheap flannel. You know, for once buy something that's not cheap, uh, buy some nice flannel and you could buy, I bought mine in like an off-white or a natural. Some people like to buy it in gray. And then you're just going to be taking the flannel so that it's you know, has edges, you don't want it, you, you need to have, be wrapping it. It's gonna be wrapping around. So just like a package, you'll be, have this extra that you'll wrap, be, wrap behind it, like that. Uh, and not much, I don't have a whole lot wrapped around it. Uh, like, I will pop a picture up, but down at the bottom there, because of this room, we had to cut a edge in it for the plug we could have moved the plug, that would have been our other option, but we decided to just cut around the plug. And so I'll pop a picture up. Once you have spray you know, glued your flannel and just let it dry, whatever the recommended time is, and then it's done. Uh, you could, you know, where it's wrapped around to the back, that little bit, you could spray glue that part too to hold it around the back, particularly if you're not gonna bolt it to the wall because the one the interesting thing about these is they're very light. And so you can pick them up and move them around. And when I first had it, I had a room with bookshelves. And so I just propped them in front of the bookshelf. So whenever I needed to get into there to get, or, or there was fabric behind one of the bookshelves, fabric and books. So I would just move the design board and uh, you know, it worked, worked really, really well. If down below those two links, um, our friend Dana shows them as she's working with them in her studio. So she's uh, trying to figure out a size, but there you can see them sort of standing this way versus mine that are bolted to the wall. Mine are bolted to the wall because I don't have any space for a bookcase here. 
it was just going to be too tight for everything. I just don't have a lot of space in this in this room. So this is what I have. Um, even my other cabinets kind of take away the space, but it's plenty. It works really well. I do almost all my things can work on there just fine. So that is the way you get a design board. And I highly recommend trying just the wrapping on the installation board and using it to move it around in your space without bolting it to the wall first. Just try it. The supplies don't cost that much, so it's worth a go so that you have a way to visually see your blocks up on the wall, which helps so much in everything you're doing. So today's challenge, I've got it in my wonderfully organized folder now, my calendar. So it is, on today we've got solids for the win. So I'd like for you to share some of your solid fabric quilts. I would love to see quilts that you've made with mostly solid fabrics. Uh, I think that it, there is a whole wealth of um, discussion we could have on using solid fabrics because they really are a budget stretcher and they also are just beautiful, you know, solid fabrics and how you can use them. So share some of your quilts today over on our community page. Okay, the other thing, oh, on the design wall, I forgot to say, I have another link down below there to our friend Tara who left a comment uh, in, and showed a picture of hers where she used office, uh, um, cubicle divider walls, you know, the little divider walls you have in office cubicles. She got some of those and was using them for a design board, which is also perfect because often those things you can pin into, they're made, they're made for that. So that's super, super good. Okay. I have got just another little round of chat here because I was playing with the Easter egg fabric, the Easter fabric where I did the world piece and then I did the little tulip wall hanging out of the Easter hunt fabric layer cake and there was extra, you know, there's extra fabric. So I said, I'm going to keep all that and sew it into crumb blocks. Oh my goodness. Was that fun? I have forgotten how much fun all of that is. So let, let me show you what I managed to make and the kind of the process of a few of them. So I started with a lot of them. I started with a square if there was a big square and I had a few big squares to play around with and then just built it out somewhat log cabin like here is a string of fabrics, but then here I have just two going this away. So it's all just sort of playing on, on this square. I didn't put it quite in the center like this one. Uh, it's a little bit more off center. So this is so it's right kind of right down in the corner. And then here was another big chunk and it's less log cabiny, but up until this point, if you look at it just to here, it's the center. It's like, it's like a half a log cabin. I built it out. Okay. I've got six of these. Oh my goodness. Another one starting with a log cabin style, but, uh, off site, off center, and then having this fun strip using all these strips up here. I went totally different. And I've got some strips going this way, strips going this way, strips going that way. And it is, um, you know, a, a different format. So you're basically just sort of building the unit until you get it into a square. Now this, this, this one here, I'm not so crazy about, I'm going to have to do something to it because basically I was doing strips, but they were not even. So I cut them on an angle and then put a piece on the bottom. So it's approximately the same size as everybody, but I don't, it's kind of plain. So I might have to like cut a corner here and insert a strip, you know, so I'll just cut, I'll just cut right through here and then I'll insert a strip that goes across there. The last one was super fun because I started with all the teeny tiny pieces. So all of these little trimmings where I would cut something off, I started sewing all of those together in this middle and then building it out. And so the center was a triangle. And so it got built out, built out, and then started adding more strips. And I have some of these uh, sewing flips left. And so it was, you know, really uh, much more interesting to me to get that center, which is really dense uh, amount of fabric in it. Now I have been, so I got six of these, but there are still some strips left from that layer cake, like still. So I have this group of fabric. 
So I've got still got a bunch of strips that, that I will sew together. And I might just do those string like string block where they're they're like this one. Whoops, they're like this one that I think is kind of plain, but I will do the string so they're on point and I won't use that funky thing to, to do the X over here. So I will lay them out like a center and then string them this way and string them this side. So they'll be all just strips on the last. I'll probably be able to get two, maybe three of them out of here. It just depends on, because they're kind of wide. So these are wider ones. So that was a lot. Uh, six, I'll probably get eight total. Then I still have, then I have the strings that I did from the March Hope. I have those crumb blocks rather. And then I have crumb blocks that I've been doing from the Home Is. So here's the Home Is ones. So this is quite a bit um, of, and I you know I don't have a plan for them yet, but someday, someday I'll get a plan going. Uh, <laughs> there's always someday. <laughs> the other last thing I wanna talk about is a little uh, sort of discussion we had within the live chat portion, portion when the video first runs and then later I think I had this with several other people in different places about um, my thought on trying to build a habit. Uh, and what's interesting is how all of us approach building a habit. So I want to cross stitch each day. That's what I'm going for. And I decided that I would definitely use my calendar to mark on there. So you see I put cross stitch, XS, and UFO. Whether I worked on a UFO that day or not, whether I worked on some cross stitch. And this has been really good to help me stay motivated because I'm also keeping this cross stitch out. So this one now is, you know, I've got to get the April done early so I can work on another cross stitch this month. So I've got it out on my table. I've been taking little breaks whenever I feel like it just to do a little stitching, just to move everything forward. Uh, now, a couple of people gave suggestions of things that, I don't think they necessarily do this themselves, but they read it. They read it somewhere. Somebody else does this uh, and they you know, will wake up in the morning and stitch first thing in the morning, like as soon as they get up. And I think that's fabulous if it works for you, but that doesn't work for me at all. I'm not one of those people who can get up and quietly sit and do something. I can't get up and quietly read. I can't get up and quietly stitch or sew. When I get up in the morning, my brain is on fire. My brain is like zoom, 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 zoom. And so I have to organize and do the things that are active, brain active in the morning. So that's basically when I'm writing patterns, I'm designing things. Those are the kind of things that are my morning activity. If I were to sit, and cross stitch for 30 minutes, it would just be torture. It would actually be torture. I, I could not do it. I just, you know, I might take a break. Like if I'm doing a bunch of typing, sitting, I gotta get up, I gotta move. Then I found if I've got this on my work table right behind me, I can get up, I can just stand there and do a few stitches. You know, maybe you stitch a word or stitch a, a long, a little segment. And then I'm done with that. Then I have to go back. Then my brain is like, okay, now I can go on to the next thing. Um, so I think knowing yourself and how you approach things and what your good times are for quiet things, what your good times are for, uh, uh, you know, analytical things, uh, action things, like you might want to go for your jog or go for your, do your yoga at certain times a day because that's when your body is more active and you have more energy to do that. Go for your walk. Uh, so I think picking your time is super important, not only for doing it, but doing it when it works for you, instead of trying to force yourself to do something at a time that is totally inappropriate for your mindset and how you, how you work. So that was my revelation <laughs> over the last few days. Uh, it was fun to chat with people about that. I really appreciate everybody coming up with ideas and suggestions. I'm very excited to be marking every day on the calendar for this month. I'm mentally ready to do that. I wanted to do it last month, but it was not, I didn't have the energy or focus for last month, but I do this month. So it's like, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to see how far I get. Hope you enjoyed the chat about the design walls. And if you want to make one, I'd love to have you share it in the community page when you're done so we can all see it and cheer you on for finally getting a design wall. So links are down below, my friend. Thank you so much for everything. I love you. I'll see you online.